Hey girls, welcome to Ask Jesse. I hope this goes quick because it is so humid outside in Arizona today. I gotta get my butt back inside. But Sammy is going bonkers and she's screaming and she's partying inside. So I needed to go to the most quietest spot I could find, which was out here in the humidity. Okay, first question. Number one, from Haley. Haley says, hi Jesse. Hey Haley. I've been with you for a while now because you rock. You rock, girl. Your workouts are fabulous and I see great results from sticking with them. That is what I like to hear. That being said, I kind of suck at planning my meals and balancing my daily macros or logging my food in general. I know I'm probably not the only one. No, you are not. So I wanted to see if you had any tips that would help me stay on track and make IIFYM a little bit easier to follow. I would love to be a macro champ someday. Haha, ha, thank you. You're adorable. You are not the only one, believe me. So here's my initial thoughts on IIFYM. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's if it fits your macros. Um, I never like to use that alone. I like to add an extra M to it. So I like to do IIFYMM, which is if it fits your macros and micros. Because if you go to the hashtag flexible diet or hashtag IIFYM, you're going to find a bunch of shit. You're going to find Captain Crunch. You're going to find ice cream. You're going to find pop tarts. And you are never going to change your physique by eating those things often, right? So IIFYM gets so completely, totally abused. It drives me insane. That's why I add the extra M to it, because if you track and pay attention to your micros, which are vitamins and minerals that are essential to you digesting your food, digesting your nutrients, your body operating the way it's supposed to do, your body will not get the vitamins and minerals it needs to operate to its maximum level just by eating you know, the foods that you eat all day. So you really need to take a multivitamin, you really need to take other vitamins and minerals that are essential to your health. I also put sugars and fibers into that micronutrient category. Uh, technically they're not micronutrients, but um, I put them in there because those are the most important to me. If you are overdoing your sugar, your body's not going to change. If you are not getting enough fiber, your body's not going to change. The biggest purpose behind flexible dieting is that it allows you to calm the bleep down with the craziness of getting lean and this nuts diet where you have to eat tilapia and broccoli or tilapia and asparagus for what 12 weeks 15 weeks 20 weeks it's out of control you might as well just go like be miserable for the rest of your life because nothing good is going to come out of that yeah okay cool you're going to get lean awesome you're going to be miserable your husband's going to want to divorce you your kids are going to hate you you're going to be stressed out you're not going to sleep well you're not going to feel good your workouts are going to suck i could go on and on about that and then after you're lean from eating tilapia and broccoli for 15 weeks you're gonna what get on stage do your photo shoot whatever go to your wedding go to your reunion get in your bathing suit and that one event is over and then you are going to hide in your pantry and you are going to take massive amounts of food and donuts and cookies and Oreos or whatever and you are just going to shove your face with them and it's not healthy there's nothing good about that and then like 24 hours later you look the way you looked eight weeks ago and you keep that going until all of a sudden two, three, four, five weeks after your show, you're worse off than when you started to try to get lean and you get depressed and you're sad, you have body image issues. Okay, I think I'm making my point. It's all bad, all right? So flexible dieting will change your life because it allows you to be a normal human. Ah, what a concept. Okay, a carb is a carb is a carb is a carb is a carb. All right, I wake up in the morning. What flexible dieting means is I wake up in the morning. If I feel like having a bagel and cream cheese, guess what? I get to. How awesome is that? Here's the deal. If I just have a bagel and cream cheese, it is nine grams of protein, 48 grams of carbs, and six grams of fat, okay? There's nothing balanced about that. Not enough protein, too many carbs for the amount of protein, and for the lack of protein and six grams of fats, fine. That's not a balanced, healthy, amazing breakfast. What you do is you add three eggs to it. Two of them are whites only and one of them is a whole egg. Once you do that, you've got 23 grams of protein, 48 grams of carbs, and 11 grams of fat, okay? So I just had three delicious eggs, a bagel, and some cream cheese, and I just created a delicious, I mean, pff, a little bagel sandwich, 
eggs, cream cheese, mm, so good. Throw some veggies on there, oh my gosh, amazing. I think I'm gonna go make it right now. And it is a perfectly beautiful, amazing breakfast. And it's easy, there's a package of bagels in my pantry because I got kids and they love bagels. Okay, are you starting to understand my point where it's flexible? I can choose that bagel or I can choose oatmeal. Either way, it's still probably gonna be the same amount of carbs or really close to it. So that's the flexible part about it. Health is still very important. A lean protein is still better than a hot dog. Saturated fat is still better than unsaturated or trans fats. Complex carbs are still better than simple carbs. Follow an 80-20 rule. 80% of the time you're choosing good, awesome, healthy, lean, natural foods. 20% of the time, you add a bagel and cream cheese to it. You have a cookie, you have some Oreo, you know what I mean? Track everything still though, just so you have an awareness of what the heck is going on with your body and what you're eating. That goes into my next tip for you. You're having trouble you know, tracking your food and just getting started with that and just tracking it in general. Whether you do it by hand or an app like MyFitnessPal, just track everything. You don't even have to start the whole diet thing yet. Just start by tracking your food. If you're eating a bunch of crap and whatever, just get in the habit, take two weeks and track everything every day. Even if the end result of your macros is totally terrible, just track it so that you start that habit, okay? And it will really motivate you to want to change your eating habits because you're going to see that you had, you know, 90 grams of fat and 65 grams of protein and 400 grams of carbs at the end of the day and you're gonna be like, oh my God, this is not balanced and this is really bad. So it's basically like an awareness. Once you start tracking it, you'll realize where the gaps are, where the holes are, what you're missing, things like that. Once you develop that habit, then you can start changing your foods. You can start educating yourself on what a complex carb does to your blood sugar levels and your insulin levels compared to what a simple carb does. How much fat a non-lean protein will add to your diet than a lean protein. Why unsaturated fats are better than saturated and trans fats. It's important to not eliminate all saturated fats. That's why I like things like coconut oil and egg yolks, but it's not the only fats that I choose. So I wanna get other fats in there, nut butters, olive oils, things like that. So step one, get your macros figured out. You can become a Jessie's girl by buying my eBooks on jessiefitness.com. That figures out your macros for you, or you can get online and figure out your macros on your own. There's tons of calculators out there. And then just start by building some menus. Just take five meals a day and write down on a notepad what you think a balanced meal is, and then go into your app and calculate it and see what it is. And if it's not enough protein, if the three eggs that you created in meal one isn't enough protein for that meal, add two more eggs and then recalculate and see if you hit the protein amount that you're supposed to hit for that meal. If a fourth of a cup of oatmeal isn't enough, then see what calculates when you add a half of a cup of oatmeal. You have to play, you have to dedicate time to this, you have to put the work in, do some homework, create a habit, and it completely becomes a lifestyle. That's it. You just have to put the effort in and your life will change, I promise.